we talk about all modes of operation, so you know most of them are regular. Then we get into electronic camming. And over here, I did some XY path here. And I just drew this up in AutoCAD. It's some funny looking path that doesn't really mean anything. And what I wanted to do was prove the point of electronic camming and how well our ability to change the time and the amplitude of the cam table would work. So I drew this very small in AutoCAD. And I took the points on the path and I exported them out into a spreadsheet of numbers. The spreadsheet of numbers was about 750 points. Okay? And electronic camming, we can't really hold that many points. It says 750 fixed data points and 500 variable points. Well, I was right at the end. <coughs> Truth be known, 754 points, so I exceeded it. And I thought, well, shoot, I, I, what am I going to do here? My cam table, the, the, the number of points is bigger than what's in my cam table capacity. I can only hold 750, I have 754 points. Well, we also do something called cubic spline interpolation. Between each point, we look at the prior points and the points coming in and out of one point, and then we do a cubic spline smoothing of that. Okay? When I imported the cam table, it went from 754 points to 30. And there's the actual data right there. I reduced the cam table down to only 30 points. When I did that, I used the cam import table that I briefly showed you earlier in SMI, and I, we're not going to get into the detail of this until later this week. And it asks you how accurate do you want to import that cam table. And I left it at default of three encoder counts. So I accurately imported it to where this path of points would be within three encoder counts resolution of the entire cam path. After I did it that way, and because it's a cubic spline, even if I change the amplitude of the cam table and make it much larger, make that pattern get bigger and bigger, I'm still within three encoder counts resolution. It does not matter. Because it's a cubic spline interpolation, the resolvability maintains the accuracy regardless of the amplitude. Okay? So, as a result, Instead of 754 points, I only have 30 points. Well, then I can store a whole bunch of paths or patterns in one motor and then just call it up later with an SMI or excuse me, an HMI or a rotary selector switch or whatever. And instantly, you've got multiple paths stored in these motors. Okay? All standalone and extremely efficient and, and very good resolution and controllability because I can change the resolution of that then I can change the effect of whatever that cam table is doing. Now, if it's a path cutting something out or laying glue or dispensing something like that, I can make it larger or smaller. In a case like this, it may be pressing apart together and you want more force. So you, you increase the amplitude of it and it applies more for, force to whatever you're pressing. Okay? In the case of a rotary knife, if you change the amplitude, it's not really going to do as much because it's zipping around anyway. Uh, in the case of the frequency, what you're doing is changing how quickly it can cut the part. It can cut them closer together or farther apart. So we have the ability to change the frequency or the amplitude in electronic camming. 